Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God, welcome to the 21 Days of Impact right here on the Blaze Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But we're going to be in a 21-day fast, and together we're going to experience impact, breakthrough. We're going to practice the authority of a believer. Amen. Because many of us don't know, and many of us have never considered, and we're Christian, and we've never considered the incredible impact that our words have. When it comes to scripture, when it comes to the word of God, God created us to be expressive beings. And the Bible tells us that our words hold the power of life and death. So what do you think about that? Welcome to the blades. So listen, let's get into it. 21 days of fasting. And at the time of this recording, we'll we'll be in the first week of the fast. So consider this day one, wherever you start, if you start, if you join us, amen, welcome um, to the 21 days of fasting. And we do this every year to gear up for the year. I believe that if we put the first effort, the first month, the first of God's time that he given that gives us back to him, I believe that that will be considered an honor to him and he'll bless that first. Amen. Because the first thing is the first thing. And whatever you do in the first of your day, whatever you do in the first of your week, whatever you do in the first with your finances, God will bless it if you give it into the kingdom of God. So that way it could bless you and others. Furthermore, it will bless your life and your family's life if you get into a fast that means something. And the only way I consider a fast a true fast is when you're doing it for others and you benefit from the benefits that are coming from the blessing of the Lord over your life. So if I'm going to fast, I'm going to do a biblical fast because I just don't want to do it as a diet plan. I just don't want to do it as a way of a health benefit or anything like that. I want to do this according to the scriptures. So it's a no-brainer. You want to win every time? Read the word and speak the word out of your own mouth. You want to be impactful this year? Then read the word of God and speak the word of God out of your mouth. You want to make sure you're fasting for the right purpose and the right reason? Get into the word of God. Let the word of God get into you so the word of God will get out of you and you will speak it forward. You can never miss. Amen. Because everything else will go away. After a while, either your flesh is going to win the battle over life, over your life, or the word of God is going to win the battle over your life. And for sure, the battle has already been won. The victory belongs to me because of what Jesus did already on the cross of Calvary. And the victory also belongs to you. Enough speaking about what if God can do, or is it the will of God, or, you know, Unless, you know, you could be blessed unless God doesn't want to give me anything and you could live that. Enough is enough. We need to change our vocabulary, ladies and gentlemen, Christians, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to change our our vocabulary and we need to categorize our unbelief and leave it in that category of unbelief. So last year, I tried my best and I think I'm almost there. I think I accomplished it. I tried to take away every single excuse that I had to not believe in the word of God over my life. It may sound strange, but that was my goal for the whole year. My goal was to take out every excuse I had that I had left to not believe in the word of God. Because it wasn't taking me anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. Right? So by the power of God and his word, he took me to a different level. I don't know if it's a level that's high enough. But for sure, since last year and the year before, I'm in a different place. And it's because of God's word in my life and working through my life. And I want this to be your year of breakthrough. I want this to be your most impactful year of your life. And I have the secret sauce here right in front of me in my notes. We're going to speak life. So part of this 21 days of impact, we're going to start the series of speak life series, 21 days of speaking life. And along the way, I'm going to offer uh, my friends and family some ways that you could go deeper in these messages. And that I'll, I'll get to a later time. But let's get into the word. The power of life and death. First of all, have you been spoken over? Like, has have people spoken death over your life? Now, when I say that, let's think this clear. When you were young, when you were a kid or child, Did you ever have a relative, unfortunately, that spoke negatively over your life? Or were you compared to a person in your family, a brother or sister, 
a cousin or uncle or anything and they compared you to that person that wasn't doing well and they said you're just you're going to be just like that so and so has that ever happened in your life when you were young how about now when you're older more mature are people around you your surroundings are they always you know like the dreadful people uh they complain so much they're miserable you know they're depressed they're you know walking around defeated are you surrounded by people like that or how about this are you surrounded with people who love you genuinely because they know how to love you they love god they love you genuinely and they speak life concerning all things that are living and they curse all things that are dead or lead to death over your life and they want you to move forward are you surrounded by those type of people or have you experienced that before now you settle that in your mind And I'm going to start. I want you to think about that while we go through this. God created us to be expressive beings. We express our feelings. We express what we believe. We express how we are through art, through, you know, talents, gifts, finances, work. We express our feelings. We express because we are made to be expressive beings. And the Bible tells us that our words, our words, the words that come out of our very own mouth, hold the power of life. And hold the power of death. Proverbs 18.21 says that we have the power of life and death is in the power of the tongue. So you want encouragement? Speak encouragement over your own life. Take the scriptures and speak those scriptures over your life. Amen. It's not that hard. We make it more difficult than what it really is. And surprisingly so. Listen, I'm not sneaking around and spying on other believers and Christians that are in church and leadership and all. I'm not spying on nobody, but I kind of have this sense that a lot of people are not picking up their word anymore. They're relying on what's happening in the church services. They're relying on what's happening on a televangelist network. They're relying on what's happening on my podcast. They rely on what I'm saying other than rather than reading the word for themselves. I'm just sensing that just by some actions and some, you know, yeah, some actions I'm seeing, some behavioral patterns that I'm seeing in myself sometimes and in others. Now, I follow, I've been following a man. He's in the, he's in the, in the heavens now. He's with the Lord. But I followed him, I want to say, since 2011, I started following this man of God. Maybe even sooner than that. And then um, his legacy, his life, his ministry, powerful, impacted my life, changed my framework of thinking, and he really inspired me all these years. He goes home to be with the Lord, and then a scandal comes like a week after or two after, after he dies, a scandal of some behavioral patterns that he was expressing to people, and now uh, it's in the category of sexual misconduct. And I'm like, wow, really? Like... When the man was alive, this couldn't happen. Now, the legacy of this man is living with us, and he's gone to be with the Lord. He cannot defend himself. But I'm wondering, the act, you know, first of all, that's wrong. Um, and his ministry has expressed their condolences, their apologies for all the people who are affected by this misconduct because they see it to be true for the most part. But I've yet to hear Anything said about his words over another person that were in a sexual manner. In other words, his words um, carried more than his actions. And I know the act of sexual, sexual misconduct is wrong. I'm not justifying it. Although, I, I, you know, who knows if this is true? He cannot defend himself right now. He's, you know, with the Lord. But if this conduct was true, then what would matter more? What he said or what he did. The world would say actions speak louder than words. And some Christians always say that actions speak louder than words. But the word doesn't say that. What's what's even above the name of Jesus in the scriptures? And Jesus did a whole bunch of acts. His actions spoke, right? But what is what is above the Lord's actions? His word. What was spoken. So I know it sounds cool. Oh, you know, actions speak louder than words. I say it sometimes too, but biblically, that's not true. Biblically, the word, your, what you speak out of your mouth, amen, is more powerful than your actions. As a matter of fact, what you speak out of your mouth 
will kind of control your bad behavior, will kind of control your bad actions and your reactions and your responses by the word of God. Amen. By the word of God. So encouragement often comes through spoken words. So if encouragement comes through spoken words, guess what comes also from spoken words? Discouragement. The Bible says reckless words pierce like a sword. Proverbs twelve eighteen. But how good is a timely word? Proverbs fifteen twenty three. To speak life is to be a person of encouragement, a person of edification, a person who loves to bless others and to be a blessing by speaking words of encouragement. So what we say really will outweigh our actions. Now, I'm not condoning any kind of sinful behavior, any kind of sexual misconduct or anything like that. What I am saying is if you repeat what the word says and you speak it out of your own mouth, those other actions, they can't live at the same time. It's a possibility for you to curse and bless someone at the same time. I'm not saying at different times. I'm saying at the same time, if you're listening to what I'm saying, you know, so if you have some art against somebody, pray for that person or pray for those people. It's impossible for you to pray for them and have art for those people or for that person at the same time. You might think about it later. You might think about it, you know, you know, afterwards, but you cannot think about those things at the same time. Amen. How about this one? The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. How can we, as followers of Christ, learn to harness our words so that we speak life to those we love and to the lost and to the dying people of this world? Proverbs 10, 11 says that the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. Now, it's not hard for people to go around cursing people. It's not hard for people to go around speaking death over people. It's not hard for people to start complaining about the situation, their circumstances, what's going on. I think, I believe, it's harder for a lot of us to speak life over a situation that looks like it's dead or to speak encouraging words to someone who's always discouraging us or to speak blessings over people who are always cursing us or to believe in somebody who doesn't believe in who we are through Christ. I think that's a harder thing, but I think also it's a necessary thing to be a word of encouragement, a word that edifies, a word that will bless others through the day so we can make an impact. So during this 21 day fast, if you're joining with the fast, it's not mandatory that you join with the 21 day fast to be blessed by this series, not mandatory, but there will be benefits for joining with a whole lot of believers all around the world that are focusing 21 days, the first of the year, the first month of the year, and dedicating that unto the Lord and doing good works, praying more, believing more, speaking the word more, reading the word more, and loving more, right? There's always benefits for that. So if we learn how to harness our words and make sure we're speaking life to those that we love and to those who are lost, and to those who are dying, then we'll be on our way to an impactful year. An impactful year for 21 days of impact. impact. Proverbs 18, verses 20 and 21 says it like this. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is full or filled. Amen. So I'm already thinking about the cancellation of food into my body. So these are going to be the type of scriptures that are going to help me through. Knowing that I could be filled up internally, physically, emotionally, spiritually by the word of God. So from the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Now, what fruit? Fruit that is alive or fruit that is dead? Fruit that is living or fruit that is dying? Which fruit are you loving and which fruit will you love to eat this passage figuratively refers to the words as the fruit of the mouth which is in other passages are the fruit of the lips proverbs 12 14 proverbs 13 and 2 so the harvest of our words because we are harvesting our words we are planting seeds you ever spoke a word out that you blurted it out and you say man i wish i could take that back And 
whether somebody heard it or not, you still wish you could take that back. And nine out of 10 times, um, it was heard already. (laughs) So we can't take it back, but we wish we could. So the harvest of our words can either bring the benefits of life or, you know, the tragedy of destruction and death from our very own lips. The Bible says with the same tongue we bless and with the same tongue we curse. We're capable of doing mass destruction with our mouths. And without the Holy Spirit of God controlling us, right, and allowing Holy Spirit of God to have full access into all the areas of our life, we're going to fumble. We could be close to the goal line. We could be close to, you know, uh, the touchdown. But if we fumble the ball right there on the, you know, inch line before the goal line, then we fail. But with God, we can go to press forward towards the finish line and we would get to that place and be like, wow, it wasn't easy, but we're here. We made it. And that's only by the power of Holy Spirit God in us. So the harvest of our words can either bring the benefits of life or the destruction and death. In verse 21, we see that those who love it, we're talking about Proverbs 18, verses 20 and 21. And verse 21, it says, those who love it, the tongue, refers to the people who talk excessively. And the Bible says it like this, and I say this a lot to a lot of preachers, and I, re- I remind myself, I speak a lot when it comes to the Lord, the Bible, Scripture, apologetics, contending for the faith, defending the faith, you know, and all that. I speak a lot. The Bible says too much talk leads to sin. That's why I have to be careful that when I get on these podcasts and when I do these things, that I'm speaking more word than what I'm speaking more commentary. If I'm speaking commentary more than the word, then there's an issue. It might be an issue. I might get away with it. I might be unctioned, you know, totally by Holy Spirit God to speak when I'm speaking. He might just be in full control and I'm speaking. But if I'm in the flesh, unknowingly, knowingly, if I didn't have enough to eat, enough sleep, or whatever, a bad attitude or whatever, I try hard not to come on here with a bad attitude. I try hard not to come here with a faulty spirit or, uh, you know, a faking spirit. I come and make sure I'm ready, tuned in with what the Holy Spirit wants to do. But, you know, it can happen to me. It can happen to anybody. Too much talk leads to sin. Proverbs 10, 19. And these people will suffer the consequences of what they say. Speak life. It's a no-brainer. You want to win? Speak life. You want to lose? Speak death. You could be very popular by speaking death. It happens all the time in the rap world, right? In the rap genre and that type of thing. And in other genres of music, they speak death. They speak sexual misconduct and they glorify those things. They glorify violence. They glorify alcohol, sex, drugs, violence. They glorify all of that. And they're very popular. Why? Because it caters to people's flesh. What they're saying is not good, but to the flesh, your flesh wants to gobble that all up. But the spirit of God and his people are like, that's rotten. That's no good. That's foul. That's detestable. And we ain't down with that. So those who purpose to speak life and the Speak Life series, I'm trying to help you out, trying to help myself out. We're going to the word. We're going to speak life. 21 days to impact. Amen. We're going to speak life in this series and speaking life will help us through during this 21 day fast. And I'm talking about everything. We're going to cover health, prayer, financial breakthrough. Victory in all areas of our lives, sexual misconduct, if we're struggling with that too, we're going to hit these areas because we're all facing it. And, you know, my pastors, your pastors, the church, preachers, a lot of people don't have all the time in the world to speak on every single thing. So as an evangelist, I can help out, right? I can help out speaking these topics. So that way, you know, it will help out the subjects. It will help out what we're speaking I don't have to be thematic about it. I don't have to go January, we'll speak about new beginnings. February, we'll speak about love. Uh, March, we'll speak about, you know. No, I could do that, and I've done that in the past, but right now on a different place, like I said earlier, with the Lord. Amen? And I'm, I'm more in a place of receiving help and giving help. Amen? I'm more of a place of community and fellowship. I'm more disciplined now. Amen? And I'm more focused. So those who purpose to speak life understand that the words we speak have consequences. What we say, I believe what we say has have more consequences than what we do. 
And people may disagree, and it's a disagreeable thing. It's debatable, right? But what people remember about other people are more of what they said. You remember what he said? Remember what he said? And a lot of people say, remember what he did? And honestly, um, I've been at places like someone just put up a, a throwback picture on Facebook, and I don't even remember being in that place, or, and they're saying that I was there. And I don't even remember being there. Um, but if I, I'm going to kind of connect with the people and say, what did I, what was I talking about? Like, what did I say while, while I was there? It was a big event. And I think people will remember if I was there, if I said something. But if I didn't say anything, it would be hard for people to remember. That's what I'm talking about. I believe that our words have more power than our actions. And I understand that people do take actions and um, lead to destruction, death, violence, all that stuff. And I'm not condoning none of that. But if they would speak life, amen, if they think back of what they were speaking during those times of wraths, those time of violence, that time of sexual misconduct, what were they speaking earlier beforehand? And I, I can almost bet, well, I'm going to bet that they weren't speaking life. They were speaking death over their situation and over their own lives. So, in other words, we could decide whether someone lives or dies with what we say out of our mouths. So our words can affect the emotional. It can affect, uh, and affect the spiritual health of someone. So we're going to be hitting those, the emotional part of our lives, the health part of our lives, the financial breakthrough. Like I said, we're going to touch these during these 21 days because I believe that's what we're all facing. But we, a lot of, you know, of us don't have time to reason this out or think about it. I'm here to help out. But we ought to think about things more carefully before we speak. And I know, like I said earlier, we've all blown it in those areas. I know I have. You know, we speak before we think about it. Like the other day, um, we were making appointments to set up a meeting, and I was asked about a day that I was over already overcommitted, and I immediately, without even thinking, I mean, oh, yeah, okay, that's good. That time is good. And then later on when I realized, hey, at that time, I'm going to be busy, uh, I had to reschedule. So I do that. Not as much as I used to, especially when it comes to scheduling, but I still do it. Speak words of life. Words of death can do a lot of destruction. It could destroy our marriage, could destroy our family, our friendships. It could break up churches and ministries. So either we're building up the lives of our children or we're tearing them down. Either we're building up the lives of our spouses or we're tearing them down. Or we're building up the lives of other loved ones with our words or are we tearing them down? Are we inspiring people with hope? Or we're crushing their spirits with doubt and like gloom and doom type of speaking. Proverbs 15 and 4 says, The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Listen, perverted people are perverted. They will speak perversion. And a lot of times they don't even know they're speaking perversion. They're so used to speaking perversion. But a upright person that's righteous because Jesus, through God, God through Jesus said, you're righteous. We don't speak those things. And if we do, we repent from those things because we know it's not right. Because we are woke people. We are awake. We are alive in Christ. We're not just living. We're not just existing. We're alive in Christ. The Spirit of God is in us. Jesus himself reminds us that our words originate from inside of our hearts. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, he said, the good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. So I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. By, for by the, your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Matthew chapter 12, 34 to 37. Jesus. That's a quote from our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So it seems to me that there's a lot on the line of what we say. And if your words are just idle speech, we're going to be, I tell you, on the day of judgment, Jesus said, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. So careless words are tossed out unthinkably, um, but ha heaven hears them. I'm going to say that again. Careless words are tossed out unthinkingly, but heaven hears them. If we don't mean it, 
we should not say it. And if you do say it and you don't mean it, ask for forgiveness to the person you spoke it to. And of course, ask God to forgive you for those things. I mean, what else could we do at that point? It's already blurted out. We can't take the word back, but we can try to change the direction or change the, the end result of those words. We don't want our words to be a word of death. We want our words to be a word of life. We want to speak life. 21 days, we have to impact it. As a matter of fact, people say that in three weeks, in 21 days, you could form a great habit. So I'm hoping that in 21 days, we'll form a holy habit. Now, my voice will probably change during this fast. It might sound weaker. It might sound tired. It might sound happy. It might sound sad because I'm going to be going through emotional things. My body's going to be facing a difference and I'm going to just be moving forward low willing if I make it through this 21 days. Amen. And I'm praying and I'm hoping and trusting God that you will be impacted and you will be impactful during these 21 days with me as well with the whole community right here on the Blaze Baba study. I'm excited about it. And those who want to go deeper, um, just tune in, continue to tune in and tune into the end usually. And I'm going to be making some announcements midway, probably in a week. So that way we could go deeper and deeper levels. Um, I have an idea. I think that would benefit all of us and it will go deeper and deeper levels. The words we say are important because they expose the conditions of our hearts, the condition of our hearts. Sometimes our words can be our own worst enemy. And I'm raising my hand. You can't see me, but I know that's right. Sometimes our own words could be our worst enemy. A critical heart will speak disparaging words. A bitter heart Stinging words, a self-righteous heart, judgmental words, a thankless heart, words of complaint. And on the other hand, a loving heart will speak uplifting words, right? Uh, A contented heart, words of faith. A humble heart, words of acceptance. A joy-filled heart, grateful words. Love, contentment, humility, and joy. These qualities within ourselves will help us speak life to others life to others and we're going to be hitting on those Lord willing during this 21 days and we're going to be using the method um, that is really made popular by the navigators we're going to be using the hand the word hand um, we, I've done this before if you follow me and the word hand is uh, simply you look at your hand if you have five fingers and if you don't I'm not making fun of you if you don't, if you don't have all your fingers I'm just saying that the model is based on the pinky and all the fingers that are involved so hearing the word will be your pinky, and you keep on going from left to right. So it would be pinky. The next finger would be reading. The next finger would be studying. Um, The other finger would be memorizing. And the thumb will be meditation. And we're going to be, you know, in those lines if you want to go deeper into the word. So as a believer, we're considered to be wise people, wiser Because we have the wisdom of God in us, the mind of Christ. So we're considered to be wise. And so we should consider the outcome of our spoken words. Just consider that. Hurtful words of criticism, defeat, hatred, failure, negativity, and hopelessness will eventually produce death. Sooner or later, it's going to produce death. The Apostle Paul cautions us to speak only words. Check this out. Speak only words. That will benefit others. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Ephesians 4 and 29. So I'm geared up to speak life. And I'm hoping that the Speak Life series will do a great thing in your in your life and you'll be impacted and you'll be impactful. And you will go and spread this like a good virus. A virus of the gospel, which is good news about the Lord Jesus Christ. His word, his burial, his death, his resurrection, and his promise of coming back very soon. So we have the Speak Life series, 21 Days of Impact. I want to thank you for hanging out for this. We consider this part one, and we'll keep on going. We're going to try to hit on those topics that I spoke about earlier. Share this to people that you know will help out, um, believers, unbelievers, people who, who, who love God, people who hate God, all the same. Let's see what the Word of God does 
and how the Word of God will impact us during this 21 days together. Amen. I'm hoping and praying that I could um, be a help to your situation and your life. And I'm hoping and praying that God will move during this 21 days. And God will move. Amen. In Jesus' name. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.